Hope you're having a great day. It's Chase here, and today we're gonna to talk about what society won't tell you about money and how you can get ahead. So before we begin the video, please hit the like button if you like my content. Please subscribe if you want stuff similar to this, but let's get into it. Unfortunately, it seems that today's generation, I would say my generation, the 20 to 30 year olds, and even the 15 to 20 year olds about to enter the workforce, uh, we're at a severe disadvantage. The reason I say that is because we're almost indoctrinated from an early age to believe that we have to go to school all the way, we have to go to college, we have to take out loan debt, we have to get a degree, and that's the only way that we could have a possibility of having a successful career. Now after that, after you have your successful career, you just save some money in a 401k with your company, you do that for 40 years, uh, and then you have a little nest egg that you can retire and spend the last 10 to 20 years of your life just uh, drifting off into the sunset. And honestly, this has always kind of frightened me. Is there really nothing more to life? Do we really have to just grind our way for 40 years until we just wither away and that money that we finally saved up, we, we're too old to enjoy it? So there is hope, and this is what I am making this video about. I want to break this stigma. I want to teach you guys and teach financial literacy so that we don't have to live our life by this structure that society has made for us. I want us to get ahead. I want us to be able to retire early if that's something you want. Or if you find something that you love doing as a job, then you can do that for as long as you want to. But I don't want financial resources to be a burden and a restriction on our life. I want to open it up and so that we have ultimate freedom in our life. All right, so there's gonna be two things that we're gonna to need to do to get started with this. Uh, we're gonna first need to project our future net worth. Uh, this is going to be instrumental in knowing exactly where you're gonna be in 10, 20, 30 years from now. I go into depth in some other videos that you can check on my channel, uh, but basically knowing your future net worth at your current trajectory, at your current income, your current expenses, knowing where you're gonna be in 10, 20, 30 years is going to let you know if you're gonna to have to make a change or not because likely you're going to. Like for myself, for example, I saw that you know my 10, 20, 30 year outcome, I mean, I just wasn't going to have enough money at my current pace that I wasn't gonna be able to retire till 60, 70. So me figuring that out basically started turning the gears so that I knew I had to get working fast. I needed to figure something out. I needed to maybe change careers, but I needed to change something so I knew I could get to my end goal. The other main thing is we need to know where that goal is. We need to know what the number is we need to hit in terms of net worth so that Theoretically, we are completely financially independent. We do not have to work. You can continue to work if you want to, but we need to know that point in your life in which you finally hit it and you could just put your hands off and live uh, as long as you want passively. So for this video, I'm going to go ahead and give you a good figure that would work for almost anyone. Uh, and it's a good starting point. If you wanna increase this, then go for it. But this is a good baseline that we can start with to get an idea of what it's gonna take to become financially independent. So that mark is gonna be the $3 million mark. And now why is that? So if you are familiar with the Trinity study, basically it is the study in which you have enough net assets uh, in stock market index funds in secure assets where you're going to be making more money passively through your investments each year than you could spend. For our $3 million example, well, let's say 3%, uh, be conservative, 3% of your $3 million is going to be your expenses every year. Well, 3% of $3 million is $90,000. And it is very likely that you do not currently have expenses that reach or exceed $90,000 or in the future that you should have to live that. $90,000 in expenses every year is a very comfortable income. That is gonna be our goal so that we can hit that so that you could theoretically have your dream. Now I'm gonna go over four easy steps to hit that $3 million mark so that we can make sure that you're on track to get financial freedom and potentially retire early. I would say the first one, and it's probably because of the tax benefit, is start a Roth IRA. This is a must you can max out your Roth IRA yearly with only $500 a month. Now, this is purely my opinion. Uh, do not take financial advice from people on YouTube. So this is my opinion. But if I were to have a Roth IRA and I was going to invest $500 a month, what I would think the best thing to do is invest in index funds that are generally the general scope of the market so that we don't have to worry about picking the right stocks. We don't have to try and get risky and you know figure out the next Apple or the next Microsoft. We're, we're not trying to pick massive winners all we're doing is going to read the general index put in general index funds so that we get a steady seven eight nine ten percent return a year and through that you know we'll i'll put up the projected uh worth from only five hundred dollars a month 
So $500 a month over 40 years at around an 8% average return, that's gonna be over $1.5 million. And then the key with Roth IRA is that $1.5 million at the age of 59 and a half will be tax free. When you go to take it out, the government won't slap you with that big tax so that you can save as much of that money as possible. And it's gonna be a huge benefit to getting you that step ahead for that $3 million mark. All right, first number, ow. <laughs> All right, so for number two, uh, our, our next one's gonna be a 401k or traditional IRA through your employer. So it, it is a shame that most people don't take advantage of this, but most employers will actually match a portion of the money you put into the 401k or traditional IRA. Now that's also going to be going in before taxes, your income tax will be taken out. So it's going to be before taxes. So you're going to get a little bit of a tax advantage for that too. But the real benefit is the employer match. So check with your employer what what kind of match they will do uh, most employers have some pretty good benefits personally i put in 125 a month my company will match that and that's gonna that's a huge benefit because that's going to be 250 dollars you're already gaining 125 on your 125 for me personally so then you put the rest of that into you know general index funds and then you're going to see that return over time so this is what it's going to look like for around 250 dollars a month over the course of 40 years so now if you're going to total it up we got our roth ira we got our 401k and so now we're getting around the 2.3 million dollar range so we're getting there but we're not quite there before we get into the last two uh, again, if, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm trying to get this content out to you as efficiently as possible. I'm posting three to four times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, all at 3 p.m. I'll try and sprinkle in some extra videos here and there as much as I can, but I, I work a lot of hours. So, you know, please hit a like for if you want me to keep producing this kind of content for you guys, but I appreciate it. Now let's get to number three. All right, so this one's going to be starting a side business. And I know this might scare you guys to some degree. It might make you feel uncomfortable. You don't have time or you don't want to start the side business, but a side business is a great way to start getting that extra income that you might not be able to see from your career. So now some just quick ideas for a side business is find something you're interested, something you're semi -knowledge about, knowledgeable about, and we're going to create like a buy and trade situation uh, locally. This is something I did. I did this with classic video games, actually. I, I'm interested in them, they're, they're fun, they're a novelty. But anyway, I would buy and sell uh, vintage video games and I was able to generate around $500 a month doing this and it honestly wasn't that hard. There's lots of items out there on Facebook Marketplace or other trading apps that you can buy because someone's just trying to get rid of them and you can utilize that value and sell it to a proper person and make a lot of money doing that. Now, this is something that you'll get better at as you learn the value of the certain niche you're going into, but this is a great way to make some extra income. So now, if we can make that extra $500 a month and we invest that and we go, that's gonna be another 1.5 million, just like our Roth IRA example, and we're gonna have that 1.5 million. Now, that will be taxable, unfortunately, because uh, it's not in a Roth IRA, but that's gonna breach that $3 million mark that we were trying to get to so desperately. Now, our last one is probably the meatiest example. Now, the last one is you can you can definitely breach that seven to eight percent interest that you would get on an index fund and that's going to be real estate now i go into depth on my channel on how to invest in real estate syndications where it's extremely passive uh, there are some hurdles you need to get over i have some videos on how to successfully navigate the syndications and enter into syndications where you could own a large apartment complex but you don't have to put in all the money it is to buy it because you enter in a syndication and you're a passive investor in it so oftentimes with my real estate syndications, I'm seeing around 15 to 20% returns a year. I mean, that is fantastic. It's beating the index funds. Uh, and that's just because of the scale of economy, the scale of the projects that I'm getting into just yield higher ROIs. So let's get into the numbers. Now, if you can save $500 a month, that that's gonna be hard because that's not gonna get you the barrier to entry. That's not gonna get enough cash to get into one of these real estate syndication deals. So what I would recommend is if you could scrounge together $1,000 a month to save, that'll give you roughly the chance of uh, investing in a real estate syndication once every one year or two years. Now it'll probably, it'll likely be every two years if you can do $1,000 a month and it, that's gonna get you around $25,000 and that's probably the minimum to get into a real estate syndication. But if we can do that, if we can save that much money, if we can get into that real estate syndication, 
that is gonna see massive returns, especially if you do your due diligence on the syndicator. I have videos to how to do that and go into that, so check out those videos on my channel if you're interested in just learning more about syndications. But let's look at the example for $1,000 a month on a 15% return on a real estate syndication. And as you can tell, the numbers are ridiculous. I mean, these, these returns are so much more massive than anything you can do, and that's how much fit that 15% interest that's how much of a difference it's going to make over the long term if you can stick to real estate syndications and get into the real estate market but there is a barrier to entry and that's knowledge and a good sizable amount of cash to invest in it that's going to wrap up the video though i really appreciate you hanging with me through this whole thing i hope you learned a lot if you have any questions comment down below I'm, i'll uh, answer as much as i can and as thoughtfully as i can so that you can get everything you need to know sorted out but hit a like if you liked the video and if you learned a lot Hit, hit the subscribe button if you want content similar to this. I appreciate it, guys. See you next time.